Hello, welcome back to this week's market update. Today is Friday, August 18th, 2023, and we have a lot to talk about, so let's jump right into it. So it was a bit of a quiet week in terms of economic data. However, we had a lot of movement in markets this week as all three major indexes slipped pretty bad as long-term U.S. Treasury yields rose. So you can see here, as of close on Thursday, August 17th, the NASDAQ composite sank about 3.4%, the S&P 500 fell about 2.66%, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average slipped just about 2.4% on the week. On the other hand, we saw 20-year U.S. Treasury yields inch up to 4.55% as of Wednesday, which was 5.8% higher than the start of August. So lots of movement going on this week, despite having not a ton of economic data. So in the few economic data points that we want to take note of this week, it was retail sales, housing permits, and leading indicators. So July retail sales came in pretty strong, a month-over-month increase of 0.7%, which was up 3.2% from a year ago, which amounted to, you can see here, $696 billion. Retail sales saw the strongest growth in non-store retailers, basically e-commerce companies, which increased 10.3% in sales from July of 2022. So super strong growth in e-commerce, as well as food and beverage services, which rose 11.9% from a year ago. So we're really seeing consumers still spending on a lot of discretionary items, despite you know the higher prices compared to just a few years ago, maybe pre-pandemic. Spending habits have changed and lean towards those online shopping and experiential and service-based goods, as we can see in the data here. So really important things just to note as we look at the consumer and how that might affect different companies and how that might affect portfolios. Really important stuff to look at here. Moving along through our week here, we got the housing permits, starts, and completions data for the month of July here. We had permits down about 13% compared to July of 2022 while housing completions were down 5.4% compared to a year ago. On the other hand, we saw housing starts up actually almost 6% compared to a year ago. So a little bit of mixed data when you look at it just on a monthly basis. When you kind of pan out and look at the five-year trajectory of housing permit starts and completions, you can see that over the last year, year and a half, we have been trending lower in the amount of new construction starting in terms of permits and starts. Completions obviously lags behind permits and starts, so that has been ticking up from this increase of new starts after COVID, but it's just really interesting that the supply side of new residential construction is not quite there as much as the demand is. Also this week, we got the Conference Board's Leading Economic Index, which dropped by 0.4% in July following a 0.7% decline in June. So this marked 16 months of decline, pretty consistent decline here. You can see, you know, we've seen such a drop off in the year over year change in the leading economic index. And this July lower LEI was led by weak new orders, higher interest rates, and reduced manufacturing hours. So, given this data, the conference board's current estimate of a recession in the near term is the case of a kind of shorter shallower one in Q4 this year and Q1 of next year, which I believe could definitely be the case given that the leading economic indicators have been pretty accurate over the last two decades or so. You can see right before the financial crisis as well as the tech bubble, it has dipped quite a bit, even in COVID times. So this is pretty accurate and we expect that some sort of slowdown of some type will be around in the next year. Final market update of the week is a tale of two retailers. We had Walmart and Target both reporting earnings this week with two very different stories about the U.S. economy and the retail industry. Target and Walmart have historically catered to two very different audiences. However, given the inflationary pressures in recent times, more well-off consumers are turning to value-focused retailers like Walmart. Q2 earnings reported this week was a huge example of this trend as Walmart saw annual revenue growth at 5%, Target saw annual revenue decline about 5%. Walmart raised forward guidance for the next year, Target cut forward guidance for the next year. So, you know, additionally, I think this is slightly due to the different offerings that they have in their stores with over 50% of Walmart's revenue sources from groceries, while Target only has about 20% of their revenue coming from grocery. 
So as kind of the target consumers shift away from those higher price general merchandise, home goods, clothing, and more into experiences and value focused shopping, this will definitely impact the two retailers. So the difference between the two is quite apparent and we'll get into that in the next chart here. Here you can see the difference between the two companies is even more apparent when you look at the stock performances over the last three or four months or so, where in the first half of the year, we saw Target actually outperforming the S&P 500 in the blue line there, as well as Walmart in the green line there. And then around May, when they announced Q1 earnings, Target has really just slipped. It's down about 11% on the year. On the other hand, Walmart is up about 11% on the year, just closely tracking with the S&P 500 a little bit lower. So. You can see such a difference between Target and Walmart, and we expect Walmart to continue performing well, especially now that they've raised their guidance, and now that consumers are focused more on that value shopping aspect. So we'll continue to monitor and adjust portfolios according to all of the macroeconomic and market data that we look at every single day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we look forward to providing another update next week.